What's up, Raptors fans? Uh, Raptors HQ. A uh, little talk about the Olympics, specifically uh, men's basketball, because the Raptors did have a couple participants I'm here with Ray and Scott, and I didn't get to see all of the action. Uh, you know, the timing kind of screwed me up a bit, but I saw enough of it to kind of uh, you know get a good feel of of the you know the, the Raptors in particular, uh, Lennis Claza and uh, Jonas Valanciunas for Lithuania, obviously, and then Jose Calderon. Just uh, any any first impressions on 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 the uh, play of our our three three amigos. Well, I think uh, Calderon had a pretty decent Olympics, but that uh, Spanish zone seems to uh, <laughs> seems to hide certain things about <laughs> Jose's game. <laughs> well, he did play well regardless. He, he he passed the ball like he does. He, he made some some shots. He, yeah, he made some well. some big shots. Uh, uh, this was uh, in the semifinals, I guess it was. But I didn't think he was that. Uh, he was a bit invisible, I thought. Uh, I think it's interesting because a lot of people were talking, uh, particularly the Scores Raptor blog was talking about how this could potentially be a springboard for the Raptors because if Calderon plays really well, yeah. you know, some teams may bite on a trade for him and we may be able to get something substantial in return. Yeah. And I don't think he quite played at that level. Yeah. I mean, he's solid, and in the international game, it's a little bit different. You know, yeah. he doesn't run the pick and roll the way he does in the NBA, yeah. which is really his strength. So I think that uh, he didn't quite have an, uh, like an elite Olympics, but no. I mean he was solid. Yeah, so. he was he was kind of there to me. Like he was consistent. I thought he was, uh, you know, he had a couple games. I thought he was he didn't play very well, but then I think he redeemed himself sometimes. He did hit some big shots. I thought to sort of counterbalance some of the the games where he I thought he didn't play as well, especially against Russia. I think it was towards the end of the game that helped you know Spain pull through. But uh, in the gold medal game, I thought again he was kind of invisible. In fact, he didn't play a lot of minutes down the stretch so to use it as a springboard to your point I'm, I'm not so sure that they'll be able to do that and you know he really looked more like a, like a backup to me than anything well I think that's that has to do with the guys who are on his team yeah. playing, playing 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 in a backcourt with uh, Juan Carlos Navarro yeah. um, who sometimes likes to shoot yes <laughs> who uh, <laughs> dropped uh, quite a few of those buckets today <laughs> um, and uh, Sergio Lull who were younger um, yeah. as well as Fernandez who can switch between the international shooting guard and point yeah yeah, that's true. It's easy to lose him in that in that mix when these guys are all playing well. And yeah. I mean, it's not his fault. He's just not that same player that we remember. Yeah, um, from With three years back, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and yeah, exactly. In a couple of years ago. Yeah. But what about uh, let's talk Linus next? We'll save Jonas to the end. Uh, Linus Klaza, how did you guys think he he played? Uh, Linus always seems to rise to the occasion. It's like international basketball time, boom, he's a superstar. Who like, is this guy? Every, exactly. <laughs> like He's not the guy we know, right? Yeah, yeah. But an international play, it suits him a little bit better. You know, he gets to play more of the four than the three. Yeah. And, you know, he's got a little bit more freedom with the Lithuanian national team than necessarily he does with the Raptors. He, he looks more confident yeah. to me, too. I don't know if you guys noticed that. He just looks confident shooting the ball and just... I think part of it is because they know he knows he's the go-to guy. Right, I don't know right. if that's and, it. But and that makes sense point. considering that he's been with that program mm -hmm. with these same players for so long. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if, it, if if you want to go back to his uh, to his prep days or his high school days. He's mm -hmm. been with this program for so long that yeah, yeah. you know, it's all familiar. There's going to be much change in the way of schemes or that kind of thing. So I can definitely see how the confidence. Is, is there for these kinds of events. Yeah, I, I think even to your point at Missouri, I think he was still playing in the program. Exactly. And yeah, yeah, I think that's a big piece of it. But, you know, he I think his last game, he, he didn't play as well. And, and the Lithuanian coach sure doesn't mind giving people the hook mm -hmm. if they're not playing well. But I think one of the keys is how do they, uh, how do the Raptors, uh, you know, get that player to play at that level, you know, uh, back in the NBA? Because, you know, if you, you see what he can do in that environment to get that, you know, type of uh, offensive production, especially even rebounding stuff off the bench would be a big asset for the Raptors. And last but not least, Jonas. Thoughts? Jonas. <laughs> well, he sure didn't play a whole lot. I mean, if you watch those games and you blinked, you might have missed him, yeah. which I think had a lot to do with both him getting in foul trouble as well as just uh, the way these teams are built, there isn't a whole lot of big centers that he can match up with. Even when you saw them play the United States, the United States went to their smaller lineup, and yeah. you know, once they took Tyson Chandler out of the game, eventually, like, it just made... Jonas kind of, you know, redundant. Yeah. So he wasn't really effective, so they pulled him. Yeah, I noticed that even uh, in the box score, uh, Chandler played less minutes, actually, than Jonas, which kind of surprised mm -hmm. me. But to your point, they really, you know, that, that matchup, they went small uh, after that. Yeah. 
What about uh, just overall, though, from the limited minutes you saw, what did you think? Defensively, it was kind of an adventure for him. I mean, again, he did struggle against the smaller lineups, but that pick-and-roll defense was a big problem for him. Yeah. Uh, you know, he wasn't he wasn't completely committing to either showing or, you know, defending, and he just, you know, the defender slipped by him countless times, and I think that's something that he's going to have to work on. But with Dwayne Casey this being the defensive guru that he is, I'm sure he'll, he'll figure it out when he gets yep. to the pros. Yeah, yeah, and you see some positive things, obviously, when you watch this game, too. Of of course, of course. Um, I didn't get to see a whole lot of Jonas, but I do. Uh, from, from from what I did see, I was impressed. Yeah, I like that uh, he's 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 got the rep for, for being fearless around the basket. He's not like the typical Euro big yeah. who uh, who shies from contact. So I mean, that bodes well for him going into a very physical NBA coming this season. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. I think uh, if you stacked up, you know, the number of rebounds he got in the limited time that he played, I mean, it's not didn't look too bad. Definitely, he seemed to have a, a nose for the ball. He loves to block shots. I mean, he got called for a couple goal tens, and he's sometimes over aggressive. And you see that a lot, even in college players that are, you know, great shot blockers in the NCAA. That's something we'll have to work on too. But it's going to be exciting to see him him uh, come over. And uh, you know, overall, I think it was just a good experience for all three of those players. Some, you know, the more competition you can get you know at an elite level you know better especially for a young guy like Jonas exactly and I mean yet and if you look back to to, to his uh, season so far he hasn't had a break yet he's been yeah he's gone it's from true. his season to to uh, to the exhibitions into the Olympics and he'll basically have a few weeks off before Yep. He starts training camp with the Raptors. Yeah, uh, talking to uh, uh, Eric Hughes uh, last weekend and uh, mentioned that you know a lot of those guys are going to be up in Toronto and not that you know not too uh, distant future. So quick turnaround and obviously he, he seemed to have hurt his ankle a little bit in that mm. last game. So hopefully he's a hundred percent healthy for training camp. Olympic thoughts. Uh, if you want to talk uh, men's basketball, we're going to uh, have Ray talk about the women's program on the site as well. Uh, give us your thoughts and uh, comments as usual.